Now, everyone knows what bokeh is. It's the blurry part of your image, whether it's before or after your subject, it's those parts of the image that because of a limited depth of field aren't in perfectly sharp focus. Simple concept, but it's something that so many people are absolutely fascinated by, and it can be incredibly beautiful when used properly. Something I want to demonstrate today though is you don't need the highest end, fastest lenses in the world to get the effect. So today I've come out with a bunch of more entry level equipment to show you how you can do bokeh on a budget. Okay, now it's certainly true that it is easier to create bokeh if you're shooting at 2.8 or 1.4, you can just throw it to your maximum aperture, throw down your depth of field to something really tiny, and then blur out everything that you don't want. Simple. But my master, Master Wang Long, taught me that you can create beautiful bokeh and use it in creative ways, even using cheap variable aperture lenses, even the kit lens that might have come with your camera that you rarely use. So today I've brought along the Nikon 55-200 to f4-5.6, to the Tamron 18-270 to 3.5-6.3, to and the Tamron 90mm 2.8 macro. I'll be shooting all of them on the Nikon 5100 and Master Wang Long may actually come along to help demonstrate the principles. I'm very excited. So let me run through the four tips to do bokeh on a budget. Okay, so my four top tips for getting bokeh on a budget are, shoot at the longest end of your lens. If you're using a zoom lens, zoom it out as far as you possibly can and keep the aperture as wide open as you can. So on like the 55 to 200, that would mean shooting at 200 at 5.6. The second thing is, get as close to your subject as you can whilst not ruining the frame of the shot that you want. If you're further back, you're gonna have a greater depth of field and that's gonna mean less blur. Third thing is, have your background as far away from the subject as possible. Unless you want the background to be a feature of it, if you're trying to blur it out, better to get a distance between them. Blur grows gradually. From the point of sharp focus to infinity, the blur gets stronger and stronger and there's less and less focus. So if you have something right behind your subject, it's gonna be hard to blur it out. If it's 10 meters away, it's gonna be a lot easier. If it's 100 meters away, no problem. And the fourth thing is, Seriously consider what your background is. Even if you blur out a tree poking out of someone's head or a light pole or, you know, really distracting hot spots, they're still gonna be there, they're just gonna be blurred out. And it may actually lead people to study them wondering what the hell was that and take them away from your image. So really think about what's going to look good blurred out. Still think about how you position your subject in the frame so that things aren't competing for attention. And you can even use creative elements of the background to add to the beauty of it. Perhaps you get a repeating pattern that's once blurred out becomes kind of abstract as a nice backdrop for your subject, if it's a person, for example. Or the classic one, shooting at night and then having the lights in the background blown out of focus and you get the beautiful dancing balls of light. Can be a really nice effect. Four simple techniques, now let's demonstrate them. Okay, to demonstrate those points, let's get in Master Wang Long now. Here he is. Don't let the size fool you. That's why he's wearing such a billowy robe. We'll get some shots using the 55 to 200. The point of this one being showing how getting as close to the subject as you can whilst maintaining the frame that you need will get you more blur. Okay, so zooming into 200 mil. Okay, now at far away, I can still get a decent amount of blur to be honest. Even at 5.6, let's fire off a few shots here. Thank goodness for the VR this guy has. And there you go, that's not even as close as I could get. Let's see how close this lens will let me focus on Master Wang. Sorry, Master Long. Okay, certainly, a couple of tickets there to Boca Town, no problem. Oh, my reflector has just flipped over to the gold side. Brilliant. Next up, let me show you that you don't need 2.8, 1.4, or even 5.6 to create nice blur. Let's put the macro lens on, and this goes to show you that it is a combination of what's your focal length, what's your distance from the subject, and what is your aperture that creates your depth of field, and as a result of that, what's your total amount of blur. So on this, I'm gonna go right in on him and get a, a macro. There's some video footage taken at f45, right up close, using the 90mm on the D5100. Bokelicious. I don't think you're ready for Wang Long's bokeh. I don't think you're ready, because his bokeh's too bokelicious for you, babe. 
I wonder what normal people are doing on New Year's Day. I should be recovering from a hangover or something. Okay, now on the point of getting your subject away from the background, the reason for doing that is blur gets stronger and stronger the further and further away from your focus point. So if there's something right behind your subject, even at 1.2, it's gonna be more difficult to blur it out than it is if you put a gap in between them. The fall off continues to fall as the distance grows. So to demonstrate that one, let me show you some test shots from when uh, Wang Long went to the Valley of Giant Lenses or I'll just take them right now. Okay, so here he's right up against the monuments at 270 on the Tamron. And following the other principles of using the long end, shooting it as wide open as we possibly can, we do still get a decent amount of bokeh in there. But if we can put more of a distance, get him to walk a bit away from those monolithic Nikon-esque obelisks, then let's see. Well, that kind of defeats the purpose of shooting someone in front of a monument, but it demonstrates the point. Get the subject away from the background and it'll be more beautiful. And finally, to demonstrate that actually choosing a suitable background is important, let's get a couple of bokeh shots where the bokeh's kind of ugly. First up, poor angle selection and timing. You've got a cyclist riding through the shot here and some rubbish in the background. Even though they're out of focus, it is distracting along with the kids' play equipment. Here Long Wang is perched on top of a light stand. Now don't worry about him falling off. They don't call him the human tripod for nothing. But I've positioned him in front of a sign here to show you can throw things out of focus, but if it's ugly and easily recognizable as a graphic, it still stays ugly. Go for something plain like just a bush. Here I just got him to stand right in front of a bush that was about 20 or 30 foot away and the background just gets beautiful and diffuse. Go in even tighter using the full zoom range on the 55 to 200 and you know that could have been shot on a 1.2 lens who's to say so follow those four tips and then no more excuses even if you're just using the basic kit lens that came with your camera you can create some beautiful bokeh leave me any questions or comments jump over to that nikonguy.com join in with the community forum and sign up for the mailing list and i'll see you soon